and welcome to Who Done It. And for all those gentlemen who've always wondered what goes on at a lady's hairdressers, now you know. Lady Penelope has been murdered in a face pack. And this week, to help solve Who Done It, we've invited back the lady member of our regular team from our last series, the lovely Anushka Hempel. <laughs> a British comedy star who is currently to be found in a bed full of foreigners, Terry Scott. Uh, hello. Another TV Times Who Done It competition winner, Mrs. Anne Gardner from Derby. Hello. And one of the new stars in the next Avengers series, Gareth Hunt. Hello. Yes, of course, you're absolutely right. You recognize him from upstairs, downstairs as well. Right. Now let's get on with the story. Uh, don't forget that the murderer is allowed to lie, so don't believe everything that you see or hear. But I will give you one genuine clue. The murderer did not intend to kill Lady Penelope, only to stun her. PCZ100, I'm standing cover outside Lady's Hairdressers, corner of Regent Street and Hanover Place. Detective Inspector March is making inquiries. Over. Uh, March, eh? Can't imagine him in a lady's hairdressers. That's right, he's in there now. Any messages over? Yeah. If he doesn't solve it in half an hour, tell him to get his hair cut. Excuse me, miss. Oh, sorry. Madam Rose, you are the owner of this establishment. Would you please identify everybody here? But of course, Inspector. This is Mr. Robin, our stylist, Suzanne, our shampooist, and James, our most promising assistant, with Shirley, who does all the manicuring and the chiropody. Chiropody? Footwork. Miss Anne Louise, the most famous model, oh. of course, and that's all. Hey. What about me? Don't I count? Oh, of course, I am so sorry. This is Mrs... Uh... Uh, Boscombe. <laughs> Betty Boscombe. I've just come up from Bradford, you know, Yorkshire. Hey. I've won a TV contest for the best Yorkshire pudding of the year. It was on that panel game, you know, what's it called? Oh, um, you know, you know. Any road. I've won a free trip to London and this hairdo. Do you like it? It's very nice. Hey, what else can you tell me about this? What else? Well, he did it. That one over there, Mr. Robin. He did it? What do you mean? He did my hairdo. And very good he is, too, I can tell you. Yes, well, thank you, Mrs. Boscombe. I'd like to ask you a few questions a little later on. Not too late, I hope. I've got a ticket for the new musical, Irene. You know. You know? Who's in that? Well, um, uh, that fella's on the television on a Monday night. Ah. You know, Inspector, you can ask me anything, any time you like, you know. I don't mind a bit, because Mr. Boscombe always used to say to me, that was when he was alive, of course, he used to say to me, Betty Love, if ever you see a policeman and he wants any uh, help, yes, you well, must be the Mrs. one to... Mrs. Boscombe. Thank you, Mrs. Boscombe. Oh. <laughs> Mr. Robin. Turner. Robin Turner, but I'm known officer as Mr. Robin. All right, Mr. Robin. What can you tell me about this matter? Well, yes, Penny... I mean, Lady Penelope was booked in for four o'clock. Four o'clock. Penny, how nice to see you. Mwah. Oh, what a beautiful bracelet. And the ring. What a fantastic diamond. I'd love one like that. We are honored. Oh, Robin, you are a darling. But this time, it's not for you. Yeah. I'm off to the royal premiere tonight. And as I'm there, officially, I'm wearing the lot. Oh, darling. I think it's going rather well. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, Susan, take Lady Pizmink, will you? She's going to have a bijou touch up at and a face pack. Have you seen all these lovely things? Oh, it's all too gorgeous. Well, carry on. I'll be back later. I'll get you something special. Oh, you're always special for me, Robin, darling. Hi. Mm. See you after that. Wait until I went back. What time did you leave her? About five past four. I see. What time did you see her again? You mean when she was dead? 
I mean, what time did you see her again? All right. Don't get all annoyed, sir. Not until after the... Five o'clock. I saw her at five o'clock. You don't seem too sure. Look, dear, I'm sure. Hey, where's Miss Susan? Where do you think you're going? I'm going to find Susan. You stay here. I can handle this. I was only trying to help. Oh, I'm sorry. Some bleach has dropped on the floor. And if I don't wipe it up quickly, it'll burn a hole in the carpet. Yes, well, you'll have to leave it, I'm afraid. I've asked your assistant not to clean up in there. It might mean a hole in the carpet, but I'm afraid that that can't be helped. But that's an antique carpet, Inspector. If it's damaged, it will be a tragedy. So is murder. Hey, up. He's back. Uh, you all know that Lady Penelope Burroughs has been murdered. I think that the motive was robbery and that the killing was probably accidental, but that still makes it murder. We're not likely to forget that, love. We're not fools, you know. Oh, he's not a bit like that Inspector Regan of the Sweeney. No, madam. Now, what you don't know is that between four o'clock and five o'clock this afternoon, somebody placed a towel full of carbon tetrachloride over Lady Penelope's mouth. She had apparently been drinking alcohol, which means that she died of asphyxiation almost immediately. You were all of you here at that time. Mr. James, what can you tell me about carbon tetrachloride? Carbon uh, tetrachloride? Well, um, we use it for cleaning wigs and hair pieces. It's difficult to use because of the fumes, although it does evaporate very quickly. Wigs? Did Lady Penelope wear a wig? Sometimes, but today she came in for a hairdo. Ah, oh, James, just the man. Go in and start the colour, you know she likes it. Oh, I thought only you knew that. Oh, very funny ducky. Just get in and start, and don't forget the champagne. Oh, I don't forget anything. Lady Penny. James, I didn't expect you. I thought it was Robin who was... It was lovely to see you. My pleasure. Mm. I'll carry on now, Susan. Could you get the champagne? I completed the application, I left, mm. and then told Susan to go in and put on the face pack and then clear up. Susan, did you drop this bleach on the floor? Absolutely not. Wouldn't be working here for very long if I did a thing like that. I came in at about 4.25, about five minutes after Mr. James had left. Lady Penelope seemed rather sleepy, so I put the face pack on and left. How long does it take to set? About two minutes. It has to be put on very fast. And at what time did you leave her? Around 4.30. Did she say anything? No. You can't speak with a face pack on. It'll crack. Well, if you didn't drop the bleach on the floor, who did? I know. Well, I can tell you that, Inspector. I came in here about uh, quarter to five. Excuse me, Lady Penelope, I was wondering if you... Well, I went in thinking Lady Penelope might need a manicure. Well, she seemed asleep, and I noticed that her hand was in the dish. So I, I lifted it up and put it in her lap. Now, think carefully. Was her hand bare of jewellery at that time? I think so. Was it the right hand or was it the left hand? The right hand. Oh, no, sorry, I mean left. Are you sure? Positive. Because I remember thinking that her hand must have fallen into the bleach. To be perfectly honest, I thought perhaps she'd been drinking. I think she probably had. But I think that her hand fell into the bleach when the towel was placed over her mouth. In fact, somebody else must have been splashed at that time. I see that there, there are some stains on your dress, on the right-hand side. Oh, they are bleach marks. I can tell. Well, you should know. You've got some on your jacket as well. Look on your right side. Well, Mr. Robin, what do you say to that? Well, it could be bleach, I suppose, officer. After all, I'm a hairdresser. It's not unusual. It's just like you go around with blood on your jacket. Hazards of the job, you might say. Mr. 
Miss Louise, you must have been here for some hours by now, and yet you don't seem to have had your hair done. Why is that? It shows, does it? How very gallant of you to mention it, Inspector. Contrary to your deductions, I have had my hair done. Several times, in fact. You see those wigs? There are enough there to keep me going for the next two weeks. What about this? I told you, they're my hairstyles. Let's see it. It's just something simple. It's not real. I don't know why you're looking at me. It was Mrs. Boscombe who was in that room around 4.30. I was looking for a magazine. Went along the corridor and on the way back bumped into Mrs. Boscombe. Oh, 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 oh love you did make me jump here. I can't stop. I must rush. Ta-da! She was in a terrible hurry, as though the devil himself were chasing her. You cheeky monkey! Well, Mrs. Boscombe. Well, let's have a cup of tea, eh, and I'll tell you all about it. Welcome back to Who Done It, where Lady Penelope would still be alive if she'd only come into the hairdressers for a short back and sides. Now, Inspector March already appears to have some ideas, but beware the ideas of March. He could be on the wrong track. The suspects are Madame Rosé, who owns the salon, Mr. Robin, the stylist, Susan, who does the shampoos, James, the so-called promising assistant, Shirley, who is in charge of manicure and chiropody, Betty Buscombe, a customer up from Bradford, and Anne Louise, a famous model. Inspector March is hot on the scent. I must say, that Mrs. Rose is very hospitable. Very hospitable indeed. Do you know? I've had so many cups of tea, I've almost lost count. And it was very good. Mind you, I don't go much in them tea bags. Too many perforations. Still, fair's fair. It was very good tea. And never mind that, Mrs. Boscombe. What about you in the private room? You can't say never mind the tea, Inspector. It was the tea that did it. Oh, oh, you're new to this, aren't you? Mrs. Boscombe. Well, I was telling you, I was stuck under that air dryer. No, that one, though. And I suddenly realised I wasn't going to make it. Don't be ridiculous. Never. Why, that's blackmail. I will not give them to you. You've got nothing on me. Oh, oh, hello. Oh, oh, you do make me jump, love. I can't stop. I must rush. ta -ra. Have you done it yet? Just one minute. And very friendly they were, too. Well, I just made a little girl's room in time. You see, that's what I thought that room was. That's why I nearly went in. Any road, I, um, I come back here. I went to the desk there, bought a tub of cream, and uh, came back here, and Robin finished me off. Oh, he's very good, you know. He's got a lovely touch. Thank you, Mrs. Boscombe. Madame Rosé. How often did Lady Penelope have her hair done? Every week, Inspector. Did she always wear her jewellery when she had her hair done? No, never. I was surprised when I saw her arrive. I was a little worried about all that jewellery and Lady Penelope in uh, that condition. Then later, I decided to go in and ask Lady Penelope if I could put her jewels in the safe until it was time for her to leave. But uh, she did not seem to think it was necessary. Forgive me, madam, but I only have your word for it alone that you did not take Lady Penelope's jewellery when you left that room. That is a monstrous accusation, Inspector. I'm not accusing you of anything, madam. I'm just saying it would be a very good thing if there was somebody else who could verify your story. Oh, oh, oh good lad, you're doing very well. Very well indeed. I can tell you, Inspector. I saw Madame in with Lady Penelope. She was asking her if she wanted her jewels put in the safe, but she just shook her head. Then Madame came out and gave me a soiled towel to dispose of. Did you go into the room at that time? No. I waited the full 25 minutes before going in to remove the face pack and rinse Lady Penelope's hair. Excuse me, Lady Penelope. It's time to remove your face pack now. 
Lady Penelope? And the face pack wasn't cracked in any way? No. Thank you very much. I think I can clear this up. Just one more thing. I'd like to look in all your handbags, please. Just the ladies. It is my love. And here's the famous models. Maison Boscombe, Coiffeur des Dames, Bradford High Street. Hair bears. Herbert left it to me. It's only small, but it's very nice. Yours, Miss Louise. Inspector, that's Lady Penelope's ring. I thought it might be. I've never seen that ring before in my life. Well, I think I know who did it. And I think I know where the rest of the jewellery is as well. Oh, he's a right fast Bobby Dazzler. The Sweeney takes an hour. <laughs> Inspector Marsh seems to know all the answers, but don't jump to conclusions until you've heard the questions from our panel. Right, Anushka, what part of the action would you like to see replayed? Yes, I'd, I'd like to see the bit where Madame Rosé was trying to get Lady Penelope's ring and bracelet off her hand. Mm -hmm. Terry? Uh, I'd like to see where the Shirley, the manicurist, was uh, taking the hand out of the bleach. Right. Anne? I'd like to see where Mrs. Boscombe is eavesdropping outside Lady Penelope's room. So you shall. Thank you. Gareth? I'd like to see the murder. Again. <laughs> He'd like to see the murder, right. <laughs> You'll see the murder, Gareth. Oh, wait, right. While we're looking for those, let's ask some questions. One question down the line. Anushka, a question, please. Yes, um, Mrs. Rose. I, Madame Rose, sorry. Um, you have the most strange accent. It is French, is it? No, it's not, actually. I come from Clapham Common. Oh, I see. I'm sorry. I, I was confused. You were doing very well. You had me fooled for a minute. Do you um, run... Is it your competition? Did you run the competition for the hairdresser for someone to win a uh, do at your salon? No, 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 we didn't. But it was done through publicity because um, the salon isn't doing very well at the moment, oh, as you can okay. see by the number of customers that were in there. Yes, quite. Quite. Thank you. <laughs> Nothing to do with did you Did you personally choose the person to come up and have the... Did you sort of choose um, the person? You no, I didn't. You didn't. No. No. Thank you. Right, Terry, a question. I'd like to congratulate Detective Inspector Colombo for... Uh, <laughs> 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 you haven't got your raincoat. Uh, uh, Mrs. Boscombe, you mean you came all the way down to London uh, just for a hairdo as a prize? Well, yes, yes. That you bake these uh, things. And that, no, that excuse me, well, inter I it, may I interrupt you there? She did quite clearly say that she also had tickets for Irene. Oh, that yes. marvellous <laughs> show. But then I where do. that chap who appears on television. Well, I mean, I'm hardly worth coming if they'd have got it for a bed full of foreigners. <laughs> <laughs> but but that, that is the reason you came, though. Two tickets. That particular time. Two yes. tickets and a thing. No, no, no. I come up because I want a competition. I see. Yeah. But I do come yes. up, you know, two or three mm. times a year. I see. Yeah. Nothing I wish to say about that. Right. Nothing at all. Anne, a question, please. Uh, still with Mrs. Boscombe. Mm. If you have a salon of your own in Bradford, mm. why were you so keen to come up and have your hair styled in London? Um, obviously, you have the best facilities at your own salon. Well, uh, I can't, no, I haven't actually. You know, we don't have the best facility. It's only small, you see. It's over a butcher's shop in the high street. Um, <laughs> well, I come up it's about two or three times a year anyway. You do? Mm. So this was not just one visit? No, no, no. no. It's the only, you know, it's the only, you know, I do other things as well up here. I see, yeah. right, thank I you. I think that she comes up to have her, you know, day out in town, don't you, Mrs. Vasco? Well, I mean, yes, it's the only like, place I can get. It's a mix of change from yeah. Bradford. Oh, it does. It's the only place I can get it, you know. Yes. <laughs> um, yes, I, I don't think that Mrs. Bascom meant quite what she said. Yes, uh, of course, yes. yes. That's what we thought. Yes. Mr. Yes. Hart, please, quickly in with a question. Ah, oh, yes, uh, Susan, Susan, Susan. Um, have you worked there a long time at the salon? No, I've only worked there for six months. About six months. Do you earn a great deal of money? No, not very much. Not very much? No, I'm only training, you see. I see. Do you get many tips? A few. What sort of tips? Um, do you get many from Mrs. Uh, the deceased? Did you ever get a tip from her at all? No, she, she never used to give me very much. No. Yeah. She might, you know, the odd 10p or something. 10p. 
There goes the buzzer, buzzer for the first replay. And the first replay is for, for Gareth. Gareth, you asked to see the actual murder again, so let's all say goodbye to Lady Penelope as she gets asphyxiated. Right, there's the murder. Yes. How's that see what you had Yeah, it's really not going that, yeah. <laughs> what puzzles me is why why didn't their head drop? Why, you know, I've never seen anything like that. I mean But well, she was a stiff. <laughs> she must have been. <laughs> 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 Do you have any questions to ask? Yes, does she mummify us all in there? No, <laughs> she didn't. Um about that, no. No? no. Right. Anne, have you would you like to ask a question? Um not on that particular scene. Terry, carry well, not, on. No, not on. Not on that part. No, we'll ask any question you like. Yeah, I, 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 yeah I'm worried about you, um, uh, Mrs. Uh, uh, Boscombe. Uh, you didn't look uh, to me as if you were uh, about to enter a, a loo uh, when you were pausing outside that door. I mean, when you go to a, a loo door, um, don't you go in? Or, do you always listen to see what's a noise? <laughs> <laughs> well, you could do, but it wouldn't be much good, would it? But if you well, don't no, know if you where could, it is, well, if, if you, you don't know where it is and you hear somebody talking, you think, well, perhaps they're fixing it up well, in the no, loo. If you're, and that you don't know. <laughs> if you're that keen to go, you go in and then find out. But you, you was oh, sort of, no, 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 you don't do that. You're always you very careful. Like Not it. in Bradford, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, and I'll always listen as well. Then. That's a good <laughs> idea. Fine, thank you. Yes, Anne. <laughs> Any questions at all? Oh, uh, Mrs. Boscombe, if I, I'm, I'm Yes, around. please, Gareth. Yes. Um, have you ever been a hairdresser at any time yourself? Not me, no. Herbert was. Herbert was? Yes, yes, I not see. me. No. But I, mind you, I'm taking the business over now, you know, because he's dead. I see. Mm. Did Herbert ever sort of tell you anything about the way hair was done? Or well, not really, because he also ran a dress business on the side as well, you oh, see. Oh, I see. You know, we had the two things going at once, you know. Oh, ambidextrous. Oh, yes, he was. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we're ready for the next replay. The next replay is yours, Terry. You've asked for the visit by Shirley the manicurist to the room where Lady Penelope is apparently asleep. Or is she? About uh, quarter to five. Excuse me, Lady Penelope, I was wondering... Well, I went in thinking Lady Penelope might need a manicure. Well, she seemed asleep, and I noticed that her hand was in the dish. So I, I lifted it up and put it in her lap. Now, think carefully. Yes, sir, I'm sure you'd like to ask Terry, so you'd like to ask Shirley some questions, that pertains, uh, No, no. Uh, I, I realised as soon as I saw that that I was absolutely on the wrong flipping track in time. <laughs> 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 Wasted my, my replay. What an idiot I am. Well, maybe uh, one of the hours did you work mm. good. Uh, yes, I'm sure they did, but I mean, you, you're well, okay. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, you're, you're okay. Example. Far ahead. Ask who you like. Questions. Okay. Yes, please, Anushka. Um, Mrs. Rose, Madam Rose, I'm back on to you again. Um, did Lady Penelope book everything, a face pack, a manicure, a feet, the whole works today, or did she just... Was it all booked in that she was going to have the whole lot done? Yes, she, not everything. She wasn't having her feet done. She was a contract um, client. I see. So um, she didn't pay... She was having a, I, what I think was described as a bijou oh, touchette. Touch well, yeah. then I... Yeah. Would, yeah. I yeah. Yeah. Perhaps, would you like to explain yeah. what a bijou, bijou touchette, touchette is? Well. Well, she just needed her roots to, uh, doing, that's all you see. Oh, I see. Because she's very blonde anyway. Yes. Mm. A bit like Miss Temple, in fact. Yes. yes. Oh! <laughs> 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 oh. Not much as blonde as Can I come to you sometime and, yeah, and, and have it all? Yeah. We can fetch you when we have you. All right, lovely. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, uh, thank you very much indeed, yes. <laughs> Shall I speak to you again? Yes, <laughs> I'd, like, I'd like to ask Shirley, then why did Shirley say that she thought she might need a manicure? Surely you knew that she was going to have a manicure if it was booked in. Well, did you look at the book to see? Well, uh, she's, what, she doesn't always have it. You know, she's always often very busy. She comes in and she, you, you know, she's such a, uh, well, she's a lady, you know, and we, we just give, uh, I just thought she might need one. Yeah, she doesn't often have it, no. And I just, she just has a revolt. That's it, yeah. yeah. But you're always prepared, you know, just in case the hand sort of... Well, yes, uh, I just went in to see if she'd like one. <laughs> like a manicure. Yeah. Mm. She couldn't tell you. <laughs> yes. Thank you. That's Thank not you, that, that, that one. Following on that second replay, may I ask Detective Inspector Marsh, would there not have been some slight rigor mortis setting in? Um, 
during that last scene if the hand had been in that position for some time? I think you may probably be very right there. <laughs> but I'm not a doctor, you see. That's I'm just character. a detective and inspector. <laughs> yes. Well, I am a doctor, at least I was for many, many years. Um, and I think rigor mortis does not set in quite so rapidly. Oh. This well, was only a matter of how long, Inspector, was this time? Oh, yes. only Perhaps about an about hour. hour. Only about an hour. It takes an longer, hour, yeah. I think. I, I, I'd like to know, how, how, long, how long does it take? Uh, she seemed to go very quickly, that uh, the carbon mm. tetra mm. what's I lied, I... Uh, <laughs> you know, it was only a quick woof, poof, yeah, and, she, and she was gone. Well, Not, no reference to my friend. Uh, <laughs> as the gentleman was saying here, that she um, has already she been... Had been I, she had actually been drinking as well. It was a combination, I think, of the fumes. Oh, for heaven's sake. She hadn't been drinking, dear. She was absolutely... That is that is the end of the show, I feel. Yeah. See you all again next week. <laughs> yes. Yes, my right, sir. Thank you very much for being here. Yes, we all thoroughly enjoyed that show. And... <laughs> no, as, as the gentleman said, that she was inebriated. Well, well I, I wouldn't mind betting. I've got my brother-in-law as a doctor. I wouldn't mind betting that it, that, that was impossible. That really was impossible. I don't know, ever imagine that uh, even though she wasn't that drunk when she came in, she certainly wasn't. Oh, I mean, she, I, she, oh, she, wa oh, she, she was, was not. Uh, yes, yeah, she, well, she was. I think mm. she, she, she wasn't slurring. No, no she, she fell through. The, she did. She fell through the door, yeah. and she was slurring. Oh, you see, if you'd asked for that replay, Mr. Scott, yes, <laughs> that might have helped. Yeah. <laughs> yes, all ready for the next replay. <laughs> this is uh, Anne. Yours. Uh, you want a replay of <coughs> Mrs. Boscombe standing outside Lady Penelope's room and listening to somebody talking. Right. Don't be ridiculous. Never. Why, that's blackmail. I will not give them to you. You've got nothing on me. Oh, oh hello. Oh, oh, you do make me jump, love. I can't stop. I must rush to her. <laughs> Have you done it yet? Just one. Right, Anne? Yes, thank you. Um, Any questions? Not at this no, stage. Nushka? No, No, thank yes, you. Yes, I'd like to... Louise, did uh, Mrs. Boscombe actually bump into you? I bumped into her. Really. You bumped I mean, into a, her? Yes, I was coming out. Well, a sort of mutual, wasn't it? A sort of mutual. Yes, it is. Yes. Did you... Did, I'd like to uh, ask yes, Louise a question. <laughs> Who was the, uh, the young lady with the rather long, dark hair that we saw disappearing in the background? I can answer that. I've no idea. Yes. Probably yes. It, it was a part-time receptionist. A part-time receptionist? Yes. She? Oh. It wasn't somebody with a wig on or anything, was it? wasn't anybody with a wig on. No, no it really? wasn't. It was a very attractive. Part-time receptionist. Why wasn't she face? questioned? Did you question her? She had room? left. She, she, she left at, um, at four o'clock. She goes home at four o'clock, and that's why I was on the book then. We have her address, sir. We're looking into it. Okay. What her address? <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's why the police constable is wearing glasses. Yes. Anushka, uh, you wanted to see Madame Rosé when she visits Lady Penelope and asks her if she wants to put her jewels in the safe. Mm. Lady Penelope? Just until it's time for you to... She was asking her if she wanted her jewels put in the safe, but she just shook her head. Then Madame came out and gave me a soiled towel to dispose of. Did you go into the... Did you go into the... No, I'm going <laughs> to get at Madame again, I think, here. I... What a way to treat a client. I mean, if I walked in with all the goodies on my finger, even though I was a bit boozed, and some old Madame was grabbing my finger saying, get the jewels off, yes. if I could, I'd thump you, because I think that's really not on. I think it's an awful way to treat somebody. Yes, we were very friendly. Oh, I see. Oh, now nah, the plot, the plot now it's thickens. All, it's all yes. coming out. Yes. But, uh, I mean, sure. Were they, were they, oh, yes, go on. Carry no, on, carry on, Anushka, no, carry on. No, the Terence. No, I mean, uh, what, 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 it's amazing to me to think that uh, somebody goes in, right, so they're slightly, uh, slightly tipsy, in your shop, <laughs> must take your jewels off in case somebody pinches them. You know all your staff. 
uh, I, I, it seems to me most of it. I mean, I've never been asked to take off my socks or anything when I go to. A, <laughs> you haven't, um, yes, you done? No. Well, I'm, yes. If you're having a manicure, you do <laughs> take you do take your jewelry off anyway. Oh yes, indeed. Yeah, well, you were worried about her having all that jewelry on in her in your shop. Were you, you? Yes, were you worried about any of your staff? Do, were you slightly suspicious? Had it happened before that somebody had lost something? No, it hadn't. But I knew Lady Penelope very well because uh, we had met in Paris, actually, yes. when we were both bluebell dancers. Yes. And I married a Frenchman. He didn't. Were you, were you, you were very, very jealous dancer. of her, Lady Penelope? Oh, in Paris. Pardon? Mm. Oh, Was I sorry. jealous of her? No. Were you jealous of her? No. Had she done better than you in life from those old bluebell days? No, no. As a matter of fact, um, she, uh, I introduced her to her husband, Lord Burroughs, and uh, they lent me money to start the shop in Mayfair. So uh, I was in, indebted to her. Yes. Mm. Thank you very much. Right, we have one Can minute to go you? in question time. Gareth. Can I ask you... Who does your washing? Not you. Uh, no, not the, anymore. Um, I no longer salon. look after the laundry, Monsieur. The laundry, yes. Yeah. But uh, we have uh, washing machines in the basement. I see. And do you buy your towels all from one firm? Um, I don't buy them anyway. Um, I have um, a sleeping partner right. who does all of the books. Are they all the same colour <laughs> usually, or do you buy different coloured towels? Uh, uh, different coloured towels. Yes. Do you usually try to just get one type of towel right the way through the salon, or do you sort no, of No, not at all. Them? I have uh, an entirely different towel in the ladies' toilet, and I have different coloured towels for anybody who's having a tint. And for somebody else who just. Merci bien, madame. Yes, thank you. Uh, uh, and a very quick question. You want uh, to ask. Mrs. Boscombe, was this visit to London to have your hair styled in this particular salon the very first time you'd seen Mr. Robin? Oh, yes. Oh, I remember it. I'd seen it before. Of remarks about his right. touch and his style. Well, I, mean, which I was there a long time. And it there, I must stop you. I'm so sorry. Right. Uh, that is the end of a question time. That is, time's up. So if you finish filling in your Who Done It forms, while the viewers at home have another look at a piece of the action which contains a genuine clue, but nobody in the studio will see it, I promise you. Don't be ridiculous. Never. Why, that's blackmail. I will not give them to you. You've got nothing on me. Oh, hello. Oh, oh you do make me jump, love. I can't stop. I must rush. Ta-ra. <laughs> have you done it yet? And very friendly they were, too. The question is, whose voice was that? Right, panel, you have your cards, please. Thank you, Anne. All right. Yush. Your usual scribble? Your usual scribble, yes. Good. Now for the big denouement. Anushka, who done it and why? With one clue, please. Mrs. Boscombe did it. Mm -hmm. To get the jewels, of course, and the clue I have is that she had this, the mauve and white towel in her hand when she was eavesdropping outside the little whatever room it was, mm -hmm. and underneath it she either had the jewels at that time or the bottle of tetrahoodaki that she nicked off the desk to get in there and do whatever she was going to do. Thank you very much. Terry? Precisely the same thing, Mrs. Boscombe, and, uh, and also the obvious way she dropped the ring into the other lady's handbag, and she says, oh, that's her handbag, and dropped the ring on top, you know. Obviously. I see, yes. And? Um, still Mrs. Boscombe, <laughs> but with the additional clue that um, during her eavesdropping there could not have been voices. One voice would have been silenced by the face pack. Mm-hmm. Gareth, that doesn't leave you much to say, does it? Mrs. Boscombe. <laughs> <laughs> um, another clue, because uh, she also is in the clothing trade, and I think the fumes that you get from carbon tetrachloride she would know about, uh, which would be enough to uh, put you out. Right. Oh, uh, that's what they think. Madame Rosé as well, is it? So, uh, mm. you're too late. Am I too late? Will, <laughs> will the real whodunit stand up, please? Come on, hurry up. I want to get back out of here. Ah! 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 Bravo, bravo. Well done. Now, that's, uh, that's really a turn-up for the book. That's the first time in four years of Who's Done It, I think, but the whole panel have got it all right. <laughs> well done, congratulations. <laughs> but, ah. uh, Anne's clues are absolutely perfect, and therefore I would like to present you with the prize. As you know, the prize for our visiting panellist is 
uh, from the TV Times competition is that you can choose anything you like from the set. So what would you like? Um, I think I'd like to have a day in London with a hairdressing salon as a background as Mrs. Boskin did. And a ticket to Irene? Oh, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> Splendid, and so you shall. Congratulations. Thank you. Now to the details. The intention wasn't murder, the motive was robbery. Betty Boscombe overheard about the jewels early on in the plot. But the two mistakes she made were, as you can't speak in a face pack without it cracking, how could she have overheard the drunken Lady Penelope soberly saying, Don't be ridiculous. Never. Why, that's blackmail. I will not give them to you. You've got nothing on me. And Mrs. Boscombe also claims that she did not have a spotted towel with her. Yet in Anne Louise's flashback, Betty Boscombe left the room with the spotted towel that was used to murder Lady Penelope. Now, you should have noticed that none of the other towels were spotted, and a minor clue. As she has her own salon in Bradford, you can assume that she will know all about face packs and carbon tetrachloride. As a matter of interest, the jewellery was hidden here in the face cream, and at ten pounds an ounce, would be cheaper to steal half a dozen of these. <laughs> Next week, our panel will include Richard O'Sullivan, Honor Blackman, and Norman Bowler. But in the meantime, it's good night from our panel and cast, and I must go now because Mr. Robin and Mr. James are waiting to do my hair. Oh. I don't think I can afford the face pack because they'd need too much mud to fill in all these cracks. Good night. <laughs>